welcome to my channel. My name is Ibrahim Mustafa and today I'm going to share with you 10 words that you can make your Mandela Washington Fellowship application stand out from the rest. I'm a 2021 Mandela Washington Fellow and I just want to share with you some tips and strategies that can help you stand out from the list of all the 10,000 or 100,000 people who will be applying for the fellowship. If you are new to Mandela Washington Fellowship, it's a leadership, it's a fellowship that seeks to equip 700 young Africans every year. And this has been uh, the initiative of the US government in partnership with IRX. So let's go straight to some of the tips. Tip number one is that you need to have a clear vision. You need to have a vision of what you want in life. What are you doing currently? And how can the fellowship lead you to your uh, ultimate goal in life or ultimate dream in life? Because if you don't have a vision and just feel like you are applying, I don't think that is a good reason to apply. You need to have a vision. You need to align the fellowship with your visions and see how the fellowship can help your vision or make your vision possible. Number two is that you need to be honest. The fellowship is all about honesty. So if you have a project that has impacted 10 people, say it. I've seen people write, I've impacted 100 people, 1,000 people, I've done projects here and there, but the reality is that there's nothing on the ground. So just be honest with them. Let them know where you are and let them know where you want to get to. The fellowship will also help you to get your projects kicked started. So if you're already doing 1,000 things, 10,000 things, like and you're not honest. Right, so just be honest with them, answer the questions, the way you feel like what you've done in your society, just highlight them. Number three is tell your story, shine your own light. If you don't do that, no one will do that for you. You need to shine your light. You need to let the people know what you've done. After being honest, just let them know. My name is Brian Mustafa, I'm a public speaking coach. Of course, uh, 50,000 people or 10 people or 80 people, shine your lights. All the little projects you've done in your community. They may be volunteering projects. Maybe you've helped uh, some students. You donated two books or three books to some students. Shine it. Let the people know. You are part of a training program. You help your community. You do, did projects, basic projects. Let them know that those projects. Shine your lights. You need to tell your own story, man. If you don't do that, no one will do that for you. Your story is you. Your story is unique. And you have to shine that to let people know that this is what you've done and this is what you are doing in your community. And number four is that you need to write simple English. Don't go and try to write a, a grammar that you don't understand. To me, I wrote simple English, right? Some of the questions, some of the essays, I made them short, short because I don't have anything to say. So I just said, as it is. So don't go and you are looking for grammar, you are looking for things that you yourself, you don't even understand, you are putting them in there just to make things complicated. The fellowship is about letting people know who you are and what you do. So if you go and you're writing complicated essays, I'm telling you, you're not going to make any impact of the essay. So write short English, write short, short, short stuff, and you will be there. Number five is show impact. It's just about showing impact. Highlight the impacts you've, uh, you've uh, given back to your society. The impacts that you've done, the things that you've been able to what, accomplish, show them like the impact in your community and you need to highlight the impact just take time look at all the projects you've done and if you can put numbers to it that is fine maybe at this project that i did help uh, 10 women directly and indirectly i believe that will help like 20 or 30 people because this woman this 10 women also have access to what 200 or 30 or 40 people that the project can benefit indirectly. So you need to show the impact that you've done, you have uh, gotten your community, and that will help. Number six is pay attention to details. You need to pay attention to details. 
right? And uh, you need to pay attention to details and fellowship requirements. Answer all the questions according to how they ask them, right? So if they ask you what is your name and you go to give so a lot of grammar and all those things, you don't understand the question. So pay attention to details and watch and uh, read the fellowship requirement, i.e. the age requirement. If you are above the age of maybe 35, you may not be eligible to apply. And some of the essays are like questions that they've asked you. What are the challenges you are facing in your society? You need to highlight on that. Right? What are the opportunities that you benefit from the fellowship? You need to highlight on that. But how can you do that? If you don't pay details to uh, the fellowship requirement, I'm telling you, you will not get uh, that done. So you need to pay attention, read all the things that you've seen, and understand what the requirements are. Number seven is, don't go and pick someone's essay and paste them as yours. I've seen a lot of uh, uh, people do that. They go on the, online, they go on the internet, or they ask for uh, some of the alumni, and they ask for their past essays, and once they just see it, they think that that is a winning uh, essay. So they just pick those essays and paste them on their uh, applications. Or they just go and search for something on the internet, or how to, how to show impact, or what are the challenges interpreters face. Then you pick the challenges, you just pick them ditto uh, ditto, and you put them on your application. They will get to know. They will get to know because they are using softwares that will like. I have seen people who have uh, written essays. They've even seen a lot of applications. So if they receive my application in 2020, 2020 or 2019, and uh, you also copy my, say, my application to them, definitely they are going to detect it. And once they detect it, it will mean that you are not authentic. You don't even know what you are doing. You don't believe in yourself. And uh, that is going to be at the straight disqualification. So be authentic and don't do a grandfather copying. You can pick someone's essay and put it somewhere. Then number eight is research more about the fellowship. Research more about the fellowship. So you need to research more about the fellowship. You need to see, know a lot about the fellowship before you apply. Because sometimes if you don't know about the fellowship, you just go into it because people are saying that, okay, this is the fellowship and stuff. You may be able, you may be like uh, failing even before applying. If you don't know about the fellowship, you need to know the, about the fellowship. So that even if you go to the interview venue of the fellowship, they invite you for the interviews, you will get to say something. You get to what? Let the people know that I know about the fellowship. I know ABC about the fellowship because I read about it. I followed the fellowship and all those things. So you need to what? Do those researches about the fellowship. Then number nine is proofread. Proofread about the, uh, your applications. And the beauty of this is that you can save your application. You don't need to finish your application once. You can save it and return back to it. So you need to proofread your applications. You need to always proofread it and uh, seek for help. So it's proofread and seek for help. I.e. read it. Once you finish, the next day, go back to it, read it. Before you even submit it, read it, reread -re it. And you can also download a PDF of your application, the uncompleted application, and send it to people to read for you. So once they proofread it and they correct all the grammatic mistakes, they correct all the errors, then you have a final rereading of it to see uh, are there mistakes, are there grammar mistakes, are there uh, misappropriation of stories, are there things that you didn't do well in terms of the story, the essays and stuff. You reread them, proofread, keep on reading, edit, read, edit, save it, edit, read, until you get the final uh, application that you feel like, this is me and I am going to what, uh, do this and I'm just going to publish it. Then you submit it. You may be in the winning side. See you. I want you to win. I believe in you and I want you to win. Let's go. Let's go Africa.